Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech show. Coming up on the show this week, we have a little look at the new Commercial a la carte program for building custom bikes. We've got some other cool news. We're gonna announce the three lucky competition winners for the Park Tools competition with the custom toolkit that I expect. And of course, we've got all that great regular stuff that now comes for our new uploader. Okay, so first up, let's jump into the news. And this week, the first thing on the news is the new Common Cell a la carte program. So this is a custom bike building service they're now offering. You can already do this service in Europe, but now they've wheeled it out into the USA as well. So if you have a look on the screen now, you can see this really cool little video just basically promoting the fact that you can go on the site, you can pick the frame you want in the color that you want, not necessarily an off the shelf color as well, which is cool. Spec it out as you want and have as little or as much on there as you want. So you can have frame options, you can frame kits, you could have a complete bike, you could have a complete bike just minus the wheels if you already like your wheels for example. It's a really cool custom service and it really feels like you're getting a bit more as a punter. So it's something that I'm a big fan of, I love the fact that you can have a custom feeling bike and it's spec built for you, delivered to your doorstep. I think it's a really nice service and very welcome from Commercial, I'm a big fan. Next up, Tioga are back in the tyre game. Now, Tioga have been in the tyre game for many years, and of course, they still do make current tyres. Obviously, they had the famous Comp3 BMX tyres way back, which also ventured into the dirt jump market when everyone was running 24-inch wheels in the sort of the early, uh, well, late 90s to early 2000s. Now, they've got this new tyre called the Glide. Now, it looks like a really good tyre to me. So the tread design of the tyre actually reminds me a little bit of a High Roller 2 or maybe a DHR2. It's got those ramped sort of profile to the, the lugs on the main centre tread there, but it's also got them on the sidewall of shoulder knobs as well. So I think it's gonna be a really fast rolling tyre. I mean, I guess, hence the name Glide. But also, it's gonna be amazing under braking. Now the DHR2 by Maxxis was always one of my favorites, especially on the front actually, even though it was a rear tire, under braking. On some of the local terrain we ride, actually braking is more important than anything else, being able to slow down properly. And it's really, really good. So I reckon it's gonna be a mint tire. Now it also looks a little bit like the old Psycho, which is of course one of their retro tires. that has huge sidewall lugs on there. But of course, back in the day, the Psycho, as much as it was a much demand tire, especially in that kind of biscuity beige color they had it in, which was super tacky, but it was actually quite unpredictable because the sidewall knobs, as angular as they were, they're quite far apart. Now this new Glide tire looks really good. It looks really predictable to me. Now it's available in 120 TPI casing. It's a dual compound rubber and currently in 27 and a half by 2.35 and also a 2.6, like a wide trail, but no sign of a 29 yet. I do think they're gonna be good though. If anyone's ridden them, I'd love to know what they're like. Let us know in those comments below the video if you have. Cane Creek, makers of that helm fork that I checked out at Sea Otter. Uh, if you don't know already, basically that fork is unbelievable. It's fully metallic on the inside, fully adjustable travel internally with no extra parts, and it's got an internal mechanical air volume adjustable system there. It's just such an adjustable fork and it's so plush. Anyway, that wasn't what I was gonna talk about, but make sure you click the link below this video just to see that little clip from Sea Otter about the helm fork. But what I wanted to talk about is the double barrel and the double barrel air, which are now available in trunnion mounts. So if you're a lucky rider of a bike that's got a metric shock, you've maybe got a rock shock shock on there, you can can actually change that to a Cane Creek now if you want. And of course you can maximize on the fact that it's a super adjustable, super high-end shot with adjustable high and low speed compression and rebound on it as well as a climb switch. They're really tech, they're really good shocks and I'd actually like to spend a bit more time on one. I've ridden a lot of Rock Shock shocks recently and they're really, really good and the Fox equivalents as well. But actually I really like the fact that Cane Creek have done this differently for many years and it's been a while since I've ridden one so I might have to bot one onto a bike for a while and see what they're like. But nice to see that they are compatible with the new breed of bikes. Now, British company Bergtech, you might have heard of them because Josh Bryceland and his 50 to 1 boys run a lot of their products like the bars and their Enduro Mark II stems. Now, I've just launched a new faceplate for the stem with a GoPro mount on it. It's nothing crazy tech, but it's just a really smart bit of kit and a really dependable mount directly in the middle of your bars. So you're not gonna get any waggle, there's no chance of it rattling around because it's part of the stem. You just simply get your GoPro mount, get that one bolt through, 
off you go. Now, actually, I think this is a really, really good little product, and I'm sure there's some other ones on the market. I just wanted to draw your attention to this one. Unfortunately, it's only compatible with that Bergtech stem. The stem itself retails for between 80 and 85 quid, depending on which option you pick, 31.8, 35 millimeter, and of course the length and the color and stuff. But the faceplate itself is just 30 quid. I think it's a really nice little addition and very clean way of mounting a GoPro 2 bike. So finally, Chris King has released an integrated headset called the Drop Set. Now, Chris King fans are dedicated, loyal Chris King fans, and once you've got a set of Chris King hubs, I'm pretty sure you're never gonna venture onto anything else, and I guess the same applies with their headsets. Now, I'm just gonna quote a friend of mine, I actually wrote this on Facebook the other day. It says, this is the most important news of the 21st century. Uh, I kind of disagree with that, but it's pretty funny that he, he loves them that much. But he did say, Chris King, you've just opened up a world of frame choice to me. The last three bikes I bought had to satisfy the can I fit a King BB and headset. I think that summarizes a lot of Chris King fans out there. Now this headset, right, so it's engineered, manufactured and assembled in Portland, Oregon. It's got a 10 year built to last warranty, no quibbles, no nonsense. It's got their legendary in-house bearings, which of course are available in steel and ceramic. Ceramic would be a great choice if you ride in wet conditions because it's self-lubricating, really quite cool. And it's got their patented grip lock system on there. So it's the system for preloading the headset bearings, but it doesn't actually rely on any pressure on the steerer tube itself. It's a really cool system. Now also it's available in nine really nice anodized colors. It's got that Chris King look and feel about it and available in various different sizes and it's compatible with the base plate or integrated crown races. So it's more an update on what they do, but I love the fact that they're not quick to jump on the new wagon with anything new that comes out. They take their time, they refine what they're doing and when it's released, job done. Don't need to do another one. Love Chris King stuff. <laughs> Okay, so now it's time for Bike Cave, and all the Bike Caves in this week's show are courtesy of our brand new uploader service. So the link to the uploader is in the description below this very this weekly video, so make sure you click on there and continue to send your entries in. But please make sure you put in the description on the uploader anything you want me to talk about in the bike cave itself because some people I noticed you sent some really cool pictures in but you haven't even told me your name or where you're from or anything like that. So just for example I just want to show you this one that's come in from Andrew in Glasgow. He's done this perfectly. He's got a nice picture of his shed from the outside here and it says my biking buddy helped build this for me from last year. It's fully insulated, has an aluminium roof and complete with underfloor land anchor for ultimate security. That's great. I've got everything I need to talk about there. So please, when you send stuff in on the uploader, just tell me a bit about your bike cave. Tell me a bit about yourselves. Always good to know. Right, so kicking off with this first one is Andrew from Glasgow. So you've had a look at that first picture already. I've got to say, I've got a shed envy because that looks really, really nice. Much better than a, a little garden shed you'd normally have for just sticking your lawnmower in. That's pretty high end. Definitely into this. Yeah, so on the inside you've got, oh nice, so you've got one of those new Canyon e-bikes in there. Um, I lie, that's a Nerve AL and then you've got a Canyon Spectral on, which is the e-bike. Yeah, got them the wrong way around. Looking good though. Oh, what do you do for a living? That's a pretty tech looking setup you got in there. Is that a tube map, an alternative one in the background there? I can't really work out what it is. Looks good though, I like it. I like the nice high desk style you've got in there. That's good for workbench actually, good for someone like me, it's quite tall. Looks pretty cozy. You've got sort of a cutting board, all sorts of good stuff going on in there. And I see you've also got, we've got Markov WG40 contact cleaner, bio degreaser. Oh, you've got, you name it, you've got it hanging up on there. Joe Blow Pump by Topeak, that's a great pump. All sorts of cool stuff. Is that a Ryobi drill I can see as well? Hmm, it might be, it looks like the right sort of color to me. Looking good, Andrew, I like this entry. All sorts of good stuff going on in that garage. How'd you get on with that canyon, by the way? Quite interested in that, because I think Jonesy over on EMBM was talking about those the other day, and I think he went to ride one on the launch, and he said it was really good, and that's got a different size wheels, isn't it? Got a 29 on the front, and a 27 and a half plus on the rear. Kind of like a motocross bike. I think that's a wicked idea. It looks really good as well. And glad to see that you properly lock them down and anchor them up, that's good work. Got to look after that stuff, it's expensive. Okay, so next up is a video entry, and this one pleased me immensely. So this is from Stephen in Bangor, Northern Ireland, and this is great. Nice, softly spoken tone. Check this one out. Hey, Daddy. Hello, guys. How's it going? My name's Stephen from Bangor, Northern Ireland. Uh, 
local red trails, Castlewell, North River, Dava Forest, places like that. Hope you get a chance to check them out sometime. Uh, just doing this video to show you my bike shed. And this is the shed. Hope you like it. First off, I've got my riding bag up on the back of the door. Ready to go, ready to grab and roll it. And this is my track, Roscoe 8. Uh, fantastic hard deal, absolutely love it. To do lists, maintenance to be done, stuff to be bought. And uh, my workstation, one of the well mountable workstations which I've mounted on that bracket, you can see. Uh, allows me to move it up and down the, uh, put the bike higher or lower as I wish. It's pretty cool. Could be a hacker bodge. Got the TV up there for watching you guys, GMBN Tech, GMBN. Uh, fridge, which should be full of beer, but it's not at the minute, run out. I've only got water bottles, hydration packs in there. Um, shelves with my grab and go box there. Everything I need for a ride, just grab it and go whenever I need to. Uh, and then my tool with all my bike tools. Just got a basic bike tool set and adding to it with bits and pieces as I go along. Uh, big Stanley toolbox there. And uh, I hope that's enough for uh, 90 degrees, good right angles there for Martin. I'll try my best. Uh, shelves there, full of lubes, tire sealants, uh, box storage boxes, all bits and pieces. And also on the tool well, nearly forgot, probably the most important point. All mounted. Air bottle opening station. Thanks to you guys at JMPN. Um, I started doing all my own bike maintenance. Could never do any of the stuff I've done without your videos. Just give me the confidence to uh, to get stuck in, do a bit of stuff myself. I've set up the bike tubeless, uh, serviced and cleaned my own drivetrain, serviced my own headset, uh, bled and brakes the other day for the first time. Just did the quick bleed that Dottie did a video on a while ago, and that went well. So thanks to you guys, GMBN. You fantastic show, fantastic channel. Love all the content. It's absolutely great, and I hope you like this video from my bike shed. Cheers. Right on Stephen, thanks for sending that in. I love the personal message in there. And I'm so happy that our videos have helped you sort of have the confidence to work on your bike. That's what it's all about. Of course, you know, we want everyone to support the bike shops as well, but there are jobs that everyone wants to do at home. So if we can help, that's a really, really good thing. All right, now it's time for Rewind, which is of course our retro section of the show. And these retro entries this week are all from our brand new uploader. So again, please make sure if you're sending any retro stuff in, whatever it is, send it in using the uploader. The link is in the description below this video. Now, first up is from Gareth in Milton Keynes. And this one really makes me smile. This is an old Saracen Tough Tracks. Now Saracen, we know, you know, Danny Hart is racing on them now, but that is new school Saracen. Old School Saracen was a made in Britain brand. They were like super, super nice high-end steel frames, hand-built uh, in Warwickshire. And they were just absolutely amazing. And then I can't remember whatever point happened, the brand just sort of changed and morphed into whatever it is today. And of course today they're very much high-tech downhill bikes, carbon fiber, and all the cool new stuff. But you've got to love all this old steel stuff. So check this one out. It says, great show, I've been inspired to do my own bike cave, but still need to do the finishing touches before I send it in. So I thought I'd send you my 1989 Saracen Tough Tracks in powder coated blue with LX Bio Paste chain rings on there. Yeah, my knees can feel the pain from those already. Um, however, they're quite cool and they do remind me of the old days. They always had that yellow sticker that everyone used to love leaving on. Do you remember also in those days, people used to run Nike Air Max trainers and they used to leave the stupid Nike tags on the trainers. What was it with leaving tags on things in those days? No idea. Been searching for an original one and bought this one because it was my first mountain bike back in the day. I modded my original one with Campag MTB triple chain set. Oh man, they, they were a work of art, those things. Absolutely spectacular, super expensive, beautiful construction. Of course, Campinolo is very well known on the road racing scene, but less so on mountain biking these days. But they did once have a full mountain bike transmission and brake set, which were just gorgeous. Oh, in fact, you've got the brake levers as well. Yeah, I mean, look at those things. I mean, I never actually got to have a go on those, but they were beautiful. It was funny, you say they weigh a ton. You'd never know that looking at them. They look really cool. But man, how cool is that? They had such a distinctive shape. So Italian, I think, really, really cool. And there's a little clip from the old uh, catalog as well. No way. Loads of fl fluoro going on, bandanas, Converse baseball boots. Love it. Very cool. Really good to see, wicked. Thanks for sending that one in, Gareth. That's a lovely trip down memory lane. I do love the old Saracens. I had one at one point, I had a Kili, 
Achilles Fly, no, Achilles Pro Elite. I had one of the Tange Prestige ones. Yeah, it's quite cool. A bit later than now, I think it was like 92 or something, my one, but um, really nice to see. Wicked. Okay, so next one. Oh, wow, look at this. This is from Ian in Manchester, and this is an orange missile. So uh, this was a dirt jump bike, and it was designed for 26 inch wheels, but it was made famous really by Steve Gill, so a British dirt jump rider who came from BMX. In fact, he was 1989 World BMX Freestyle Champion. A little fact for you there. He used to run 24 inch wheels on his, and at the same time, in fact, Greg Minar was riding on the Animal Orange team. And he moved over to the UK and he's riding, this was way before he was a World Cup downhill racer. He was doing all the domestic stuff in, in Britain, which I think is probably why British people love him so much. I mean, Greg's a great guy, you know, he's a really good racer, but it's kind of cool that he moved to the UK to sort of get to know like the race scene and stuff. And I'm pretty sure Greg would have ridden one of those at some point. Really nice classic orange bike design there, you know, folded, folded metal, like welded up. Um, like the uh, DMR chain guide on there, it's one of those steel ones. I used to have one of those, they weighed quite a lot, but they worked really well, the upper and lower guide together. Uh, you've got Kenda Nevergal tyres on there. I remember those too, they had a really round profile. Not too good for cutting an edge, but they're really good for cornering a tarmac, so pretty good for a jump bike, I guess. Um, what else you got on there? They're 521 rims, they are, aren't they? Oh yes, look at those bad boys. So it's a 521 and a 321. The 321, of course, I was showing on that Mavic video that went out over the weekend. That's a disc specific. This is the rim brake specific version. And I love the fact on the little sticker there, so yours are 36 hole. They did them with 32s and 40. Who on earth has 40 spoke wheels? Can you imagine having those now? Mavic are knocking out wheels of half that amount of spokes. 40 spokes, bonkers. We used to just build stuff bomb proof back in those days. Really cool to see and thanks for sending that in. Oh man, there's another one as well. So what's this, the orange aero. Oh right, so you got this one off your mate as well, I snapped it up. I got those old Panaracer Fire XC Pro tires with the red sidewalls. I have to say, I absolutely hated those, um, but they're really cool because they're retro. And then you've got the identity disc wheels on there, but they're called Combats. I think that's right, isn't it, the Combat wheels? Everyone had those at some point, 24s or 26s. And you've got, it looks like a BMX stem on there with like the plate on the underneath, that looks pretty cool. DX pedals, they were some of the nicest ones actually, see those flatties, really good. Oh man, that's a, there was a whole era of dirt jump riding in the UK, such a cool thing. It was like that and trials kind of spawned off into their own little separate niche parts of mountain biking. Very cool. Right, now this one is a really cool entry. So this is from Thomas in South Korea. And the bike in question, is a titanium Panasonic frame. So I wasn't even aware that Panasonic made frames. So this is pretty cool. Now I'm just gonna read you this little story out while you check the picture out. Hi Dolly, um, I've started mountain biking after about 10 years and GMBN Tech's been extremely helpful and educational and I just can't get enough. Well, thank you for that. Um, but this is, the, like your story is just so good. So my dad built this bike back in 1996 during his military days when he was stationed in South Korea. Now, 22 years later, I'm in the military stationed at the same location, riding the bike he built during his stay. Man, that is, that is so cool. So the bike is a Panasonic titanium frame with a RockShox Indy SL fork, Shimano DRLX shifters and brakes. A few of the parts came off the track that he later replaced this bike with around 2008, uh, like tires and stem, but most of the parts are what he originally used. And then this, of course, says your, it looks like a modern track next to it there, but so cool to see it. It doesn't even look that out of date. I mean, the stem's a bit long, but by, you know, something about titanium frames is just right. You know, they'll last a lifetime. Now, I've got a titanium frame, and I kind of wish it was 27 and a half or 29, because I'd still be riding it now, but you know, the parts are kind of drying up for them. I mean, it's still a great bike, and I ride it as my winter bike these days, but man, so nice. And those Indy forks, they were really cool as well. So it was the Indies and the Judies. Uh, Judy's, I think, were slightly pricier. The Indy were a bit more for the wallet conscious, but they basically looked the same, so the dropouts were different. And I actually preferred the look of the Indies because they had the same dropouts that the Mag 21s and the Quadras, Quadra 21s used to have. So it looks a bit more like the original forks, whereas the Judy was a bit chunkier and had the dropout sat in front of the fork. A bit more modern looking, but nice. It looks like they've got XTR uh, V-brakes on there too. I'd love to see a few more of the detail shots of that bike. The condition looks incredible. But wicked, Thomas, thank you for sending that in. And I love that story about being stationed in the military. Fire some more pictures in, love to see them, really would.
All right, now it's time for top mods. Of course, this is the section of the show where we show off all those cool modifications you've done. Anything counts, new tires, that's a modification, all good. Or you could have done something a bit more advanced like this one that's coming up. So I'm actually so blown away by this, we're only gonna feature this one this week, even though we have so many courtesy of that new uploader surface. But don't worry, I'm gonna make sure we feature loads more next week. But this one's a bit special. So this is from Justin Dyer. Dolly, I thought I would share my frame projects with you. It's taken me over a year to build because of the busy school schedule. All of the jigs were laser cut from wood or 3D printed. The tubing is 4130 steel and was TIG welded by me. Let's hope it doesn't break in half. Um, I don't think it will. I think you've done, like, even just looking at this on the screen here, I think you've done an amazing job. The funnest part of this project was most of it was done in my small one room apartment, other than the actual welding and CNC machining. You can see in the images, I'll hopefully be able to write a report on my design for school, uh, for school credit sometime in a year. In the report, I'll go into the kinematics and run FEA analysis on the frame to show its strength. If you want to see my entire process of making the frame, you can find the build thread at this link. I'll put the link in the description so everyone else can see this as well. A little bit about myself. I'm a mechanical engineering student attending Worcester Polytechnic Institute in Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm a hands-on learner and always have some projects going on. Well, I can tell that by your bike, this is insane. Um, I purchased a used Transition Bandit 29er at the beginning of last summer and I've been riding as much as possible. Sadly, I ended up cracking a chain today at the end of the summer and it's no longer safe to ride. So what does a broke engineering student do to get back on the trails? Well, you make your own bike, didn't you? Yeah, so I hope you like my project. Dude, Justin, this is like next level. I absolutely love it. And so on screen now is some of the early concept drawings for all you guys to see. Um, it even looks fast just as a drawing, mate. It looks amazing. I love all this stuff. You've done a really, really good job with it. The layout of the frame, it looks like it's pretty clean. Obviously you can tell like, you know, it's quite aggressively welded together, but man, it looks good. The back end's very slender. How does that ride? Has it got a bit of flex in the back there? Or is it, is it good flex? You do need flex on bikes. A lot of people think they have to be rock solid, but flex actually does make them ride better. But man, I'm really interested. So you've got a nice low pivot down there. You've got linkage driven shock. Really, really good. Looks like good geometry as well. Slack, not too slack. Wheel base looks pretty lengthy. Front and center looks quite good to me on that, just looking at it. Seat angle is kind of hard to tell because um, you've got this dip in the seat tube there, but it looks good. Obviously, that's there to cater for your rear wheel travel. Man, this is like, honestly, this is beyond a modification. Like, most people would just uh, be, hi, warranty. Yeah, send me a new bike, thanks, bye. And you're like, no, oh, I'm going to make myself a bike. I like it. I'm very, very envious that you have these skills. Right, it's really cool. It's something I've always wanted to do. And it's something I do have to do this year, actually, because last year in G on GMBM, there was some viewer voting for a bunch of project projects we all had to do. And my one was to actually learn to weld and make a bike. So I will be doing that at some point. We're just trying to figure out who to do it with, because it has to be easy enough for me to be able to do with along with my workload based here in Bath in the UK. So it's a bit of a problem with trying to find the right place, but. I will be picking it up at some point. And I've got a bit of a plan of the bike I want to make, and it's nothing like yours. Yours looks like the sort of bike I want to ride now. The sort of bike I want to build, it's nothing like that. So more on that another time. I'll tell you what, Justin, uh, this is the best top mod we've seen yet. I think this is really good. And I don't want people to be put off. Like, I don't expect everyone to make bikes, but this is exceptional, like so good. Okay, so tech of the week this week. I'm actually gonna combine this with bike build because unfortunately I've not had time to do that much more to the bike. So I'm just gonna tell you about something else that I'm gonna fit onto the bike. And this is something I actually picked up at Eurobike from Fidlock themselves. This is a seriously cool product. So it's a Fidlock cageless water bottle basically. On the bottom it has a magnetic mount. As you can see, it's insanely powerful. That goes onto your frame, and this literally is gonna be the most powerful magnet I've felt for anything like this. Pulls itself back onto the cage. Now, we've seen there's a lot of issues with suspension bike designs, in particular, smaller bikes with piggyback shocks on, let's just say Santa Cruz Hightower, something like that. It could be really hard to fit a bottle cage in, and although you can get away with some sort of side exit bottles, it could be really hard to get the bottle in. Now I've tried this on a few different frames and this fits in some impressively small gaps and because of the way you can literally just drop it in sideways and the same, you just need to click it and pull it straight out. And because the magnet's so powerful, you don't really have to look at it when you locate it. 
I think it's a really, really good system. Now, they retail for about 35 euros, I think the price was, but you can replace the bottle and keep the mechanism. So when your bottle does get a bit grubby or you want to change it for color reasons, nice and easy. I think they're about the same price as a conventional water bottle. And you can buy the kit separately, so you can have multiple kits on multiple bikes. It's a really, really good system. So this is going on that bike build bike. I think it's brilliant. It really suits the bike as well. Great idea. And yeah, so just a bit about the bike build. Unfortunately, I've not done too much more from last week's show. I've joined the chain with the master link. I've run the cabling through the frame. I've not actually cut the cable and put an end cap on it yet. So literally, it's been such a rush with several other shoots we've been doing behind the scenes. But on next week's show, you'll get to see the bike in virtually a finished state. And then I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna be doing with it. Okay, so it's just about enough for this week, but of course, have some competition winners to announce. So three very lucky people are gonna be getting some Park Toolkits, the custom Doddy kit, coming to you. So first up is Tristan Carmadina. So congratulations, Tristan. You will be contacted by Park and it will be sending a kit out to you. Um, let me know when you get it. Take a shot of you with the kit. We'd love to see it and post it up on our Instagram. Uh, next one is Eric Riley. So congratulations, Eric. Again, like you've got a really cool tool set. And the last one, Ewan Willis. So that's three lucky winners. Um, I'm gonna start putting some more competitions together. So keep your eyes peeled in future. Sorry for the people that didn't win, but a massive congratulations to you three guys. There we go, there's another weekly GMBN Tech show in the bag. Hopefully you enjoyed the ride, I know I did. Um, for a couple more great videos, click up here if you wanna learn a bit about Mavic. So it's a bit of a history video taking you through the evolution of their hubs amongst other stuff, it's really cool stuff. And of course their brand new ID360 hub internals. Pretty geeky, a lot of cool stuff in that. And click down here if you wanna get rid of BB Creeks, in particular with PressFit. A lot of you viewers asked about that and I actually, on my Scott, that was creaking, so I stripped it apart and show you how to get rid of it. As always, click on the round globe to subscribe to GMBN Tech, share it about. Let's get this channel to 100,000. Come on, let's get it happening soon. And of course, if you like GMBN Tech, give us a thumbs up.